Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today we're going to talk about optimistic versus pessimistic record locking and another kind called page level locking. We'll get to that one later. And which one you should choose for your multi-user Microsoft Access database. Today's question comes from Alyssa in Fort Collins, Colorado, one of my Platinum members. Alyssa says, I followed your instructions on setting my forms to use edited record locking. While it's generally effective, I'm having some issues. Occasionally, a record remains locked if a user begins editing but then leaves their session open, causing others to get stuck. Yeah, that's going to happen. Additionally, I'm facing issues with update queries failing due to lock violations. There are also instances when users receive the another user has modified this record error without anyone else editing the same record. Could you provide guidance on how to resolve these issues? Okay, there's a bunch of different things here to talk about. And first, for everybody else who's watching, if you have not yet watched my video on record locks, go watch this first. All right, I explained the two different types, although I realized uh, after I read Alyssa's question, I actually did not refer to these record locking types as optimistic and pessimistic in that video. So let me go over what they are right now. All right, here's my database folder. This is going to simulate a multi-user environment. The backend file obviously will be on the server. And then I've got two users that I'll represent with front end one and front end two. These are identical copies of the same database. We're just using this to simulate two different users on your network. They'll, these will obviously be on the different machines, right? Every user should have their own copy of the front end file. You do not want your users sharing the same database file that will cause all kinds of random problems. Don't do it. Every user gets their own front end. It goes on their computer. Do not use the front end across the network. All right, lots of problems that I see from people in that. Those are the reasons why. Go watch my video on splitting your database properly for more information. And if you watch the other record locking video, I think that was one of the prerequisites. All right, so moving forward. So let me open up these databases here. Here's front end one. All right, this is my standard tech help database, right? I'm just going to resize this video or the video. Yeah. I'm resize this window like this. So you can see them both at the same time. All right. There's one. And I'm going to open up two. All right. There's database two. There's database one, right? Database one, this user's in here. He comes in here. He starts editing this record. You get the pencil. That means it's dirty. If user one comes in here and tries editing the same record, he also gets the pencil. It's dirty because there's no record locks set on. Okay, so now user one is finished. He closes the record. It gets saved. User two now tries to close the record and it says, oh, I got a write conflict, right? This is what's called optimistic record locking, which means the database is just trusting that the users are going to handle these kinds of conflicts. We're being optimistic. We're going to assume that two people are going to try to edit the same record at the same time. That's optimistic. So you can either save your changes, which means you're going to overwrite what user one just did, or you can copy it to the clipboard so you can review them. Or you can drop your changes. If your changes weren't important, you hit drop. All right, can't save the record at this time. Do you want to close the database object anyways? Yeah. And now the other person's changes happen. Now, this is optimistic record locking. What's pessimistic? Well, that's when you go into the design here. And under data, you set record locks to edited record. Now, there's all records to all records, like I said in the other video, means that if anyone edits any customer, all of the customer records, the entire table is locked. You almost never use this. Sometimes I'll use this for like helper data. You know, your little table, that has got stuff in it like Mr. and Mrs. Ms. and you know suffixes and prefixes, because sometimes you only want one user at a time to be able to edit that or like admin settings, those kinds of things. But usually you'll pick edited record. OK, so change that. We'll save it. And of course, got to make sure that you have the exact same changes in all of your databases. If two tables or two forms have different settings, then that's going to cause problems too. We'll talk about this more in a few minutes. In fact, just for good habits, I should just close this database and then distribute a new copy of front end one to user two. So we'll close this one, right? Delete that. And then we're going to distribute a new copy of front end one with the changes in it. And this will now go to front end two. See what I just did there? I just copied front end one. That's typically what you do in a network situation, right? You've got your 
admin developer copy that you work on, you make your changes and then you push it to your users. Lots of different ways to do this. One way is my access updater. I'll talk about that at the end of the video. All right, so now we got front end one, we'll open that guy up. And then we got front end two, we'll open that guy up. There's video, video two. Why do I keep calling it video two? Okay, so now we've got pessimistic locking on. Pessimistic means if I come in here now and start editing this record, and another user comes in here, they immediately see that it's locked. See, and they cannot physically make changes. That's pessimistic. Okay, the database is saying, uh-uh, can't do it. Someone else has got a hold of it. You can't change it right now. Okay, now there's pros and cons for each method. And I briefly mentioned them in the other video, but let's go over them in more detail now so you get the full gist. Okay, optimistic locking. This is the default state in a shared access database. Even if you don't think you have record locking on, you do. It's just called optimistic locking. But access doesn't check that lock, doesn't check that information until you go to commit your changes to the table. It doesn't look when you open and start editing the record if it's locked or not. Okay, so if two users edit the same record, one will lose their changes. Now the pros, it's faster, it's more efficient, and it's there's less interference from you know stuff happening with stuff being locked. Okay, however, the cons, conflicts must be resolved manually. If you just spent 15 minutes typing in a user record and it turns out that someone edited it in the background, you're gonna lose your work, or they are. So that's not a very good solution in that case. All right, choose this one. You've got lots of simultaneous users, but they're rarely editing the same record at the same time, and performance is a concern. You've got hundreds of thousands or millions of records, but you know maybe you're on a call center and you're almost never editing the same record twice, then you could use this. This is okay if conflicts almost never happen. And remember, you can apply different types of locking to different tables, right? Your customer table could have optimistic locking, but your order table could have pessimistic locking because that's a lot more important. All right, it doesn't have to be the same throughout the entire database. Every table can be set up differently. Pessimistic locking is the other one. Okay, you set this by changing the record locks property to edited record. If one user is editing the record, it immediately locks it and no other users can edit it. Pros, it prevents data conflicts and it's great for critical data, things you want to make sure you absolutely don't have a conflict with but it's slower. It can cause bottlenecks in a busy multi-user database. Records will stay locked if a user forgets to move off of them, right? Someone's editing a customer record and they go to lunch and it's still on their screen, it's staying locked, okay? And one thing, and I believe I mentioned this in the other video, update queries or, or any kind of query or even uh, record sets in code that affect the entire table, any record that's locked could affect that update query you know, from, from processing. And in fact, I think I went through an example of this in that other video. Okay, so use this when you need strict data integrity, finance, medical, legal, right? Bank account information, that kind of stuff, right? And again, you can apply it to just the, the specific critical tables. It prevents conflicts before they happen. And you can use this when you don't have too many users editing the same data at once. Even if you got millions of records, if they're not editing the same records in that big table, you know, if, if conflicts aren't a problem, this is okay. Now there is a third solution. It's kind of a hybrid between the two. It's called page level locking. And again, I mentioned this briefly in the other video. It provides better efficiency in large database, but at the cost of potentially locking more records than intended, okay? So instead of just locking the record that's being edited, access will lock an entire page of records in memory. So a page is a four kilobyte chunk of data, which typically includes multiple records depending on the record size. So if they're teeny tiny records, like if it's a junction table, right? And it's, you know, just got two IDs in it, you might lock 50 records. Versus if it's a, you know, a customer record with lots of demographic data, whatever, it might only lock five or six records. It depends on the record size. So if a user starts editing a record, all records stored in that same page are locked as well. This means users that are trying to edit nearby records might also get locked out, even though they're not editing the exact same record. This guy you find up in the file and then go to options and it's gonna be under, where is it? Uh, client settings. And it's right down, where, where are you at? Scroll down, 
Scroll down, scroll down, right there. Okay, default record locking. This default record locking just affects new forms that you create, okay? And since I use my blank template anyways, I've already got it set in those ones. But this is the checkbox you're looking for right there. All right, open databases by using record level locking. If you turn that off, now we're gonna be using page level locking, okay, which will lock more records, but it's slightly more efficient in bigger databases. All right, I'm not gonna turn that on though because I don't want it. I'm gonna hit cancel and pass. So the pros of page level locking, instead of locking individual records, access locks a block of records at once, which can be faster in large databases, requiring fewer locks. If you've got a very large database with hundreds of thousands or millions of records, page level locking may reduce what's called lock contention and improve performance. So instead of having, you know, 50,000 little locks here and there, you might have just, you know, 10. <laughs> All right, so you're locking big blocks of records instead. But the cons, like I mentioned, if two users are editing different records that happen to be on the same page, both get locked. And again, you have the same problem with update queries as well. So use this if your database is very large and you notice that individual record locking is causing performance issues, it's slowing your database down, and avoid it when users frequently edit different records at the same time, since it might create unintended conflicts. I've dealt with clients in the past where they have both situations going on. They might, you might have a client that's got um, lots of people just looking up data all day long, just reading, 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 pulling up client records, that kind of stuff. And so you, you don't need any record locking at all in those cases usually. I've had other ones where it's very seldom that they look stuff up and it's constant data entry. Like I said before, I think call centers, right? You pull up a customer's information then you're constantly typing up other, other data related to it. So again, it all depends on your specific needs. All right, other notes, make sure everyone has their own front end, as I said before, and that is all in caps. Yeah, okay, yes, this is PowerPoint, okay? Very important. Do not have people sharing the same front end file. Do not let multiple users just connect to it over the network. Lots of people do this, and lots of people have problems. That's the best way to corrupt your database. And of course, it goes without saying, don't use OneDrive, Dropbox, Google Drive, or any of those types of file sharing services to share your access database. No, 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 no. Make sure everyone's record locking settings are the same, okay? Otherwise, you'll get this guy. I get this question all the time. Could not update, currently locked by user, whatever, on machine, whatever. And yes, my computer's name is Picard, right? I simulated this by simply turning edited record, uh, pessimistic locking on one database and leaving the other one optimistic. And when the pessimistic locked it and the optimistic didn't know about it, it caused this problem. It went to, to check the record when it went to save it, and it said it's locked by someone else. You could also get this with a corrupt database as well, so a compact and repair uh, if you suspect that's the case. And finally, I should mention that SQL Server supports something called row versioning, where it's basically possible to track changes at the field level. Access only goes down to the record level, right? It's all or nothing for that record. But with SQL Server, you can actually basically lock individual fields. So two people could be editing the same customer, and as long as they don't edit the same fields, you're fine. If one person edits the first name and the second person edits the last name, it'll allow it. There's some things you gotta do with triggers and timestamp columns and there's lots of other things. Yes, you could set something like this, this up in access to handle that kind of conflict resolution in the background. It would involve a significant amount of coding. If you really wanna see how to do it, let me know. I'm not gonna do it as a tech help video, but maybe as a separate seminar or something. It, it will involve some coding, but it's possible to handle that conflict resolution. It's kind of like synchronizing remote databases, right? But there you go. That's pretty much everything you need to know about record locking in Microsoft Access. Again, in my other video, in my record locks video, in the extended cut, I do show you how to set up custom record locking right, where we actually have a record locks table and we can handle the record locking ourselves. There's all kinds of cool things you could do with it. But watch this video for more information on that. And like I've stressed multiple times during this video, it's important that all of your users have their own front end database file running on their C drive, or at least a drive on their local machine, not over the network. And if you want an efficient way to easily uh, distribute new updates to all of your users with one click, check out my access updater. 
In today's extended cut for the members, I am going to show you how to check for that record lock before the user is able to edit the record. So in other words, we'll go to the record, Access will check in the background if it's locked or not. If so, it'll display record locked up here and display a little label down here or anywhere you want to put it on the form really that says, hey, this record is locked, you can't change it and it will actually lock the form so that you can't make any changes. Move off of it and this stuff will go away. That will be covered in the extended cut for the members, silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members can download these databases and you'll find all this cool code in the code vault. Plus everybody gets some free training and lots more. So check it out. All right, that's gonna do it folks. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month. And yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus you get access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by accesslearningzone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.